Okay, so I'm right about how bad things are in Tiger Town, or I'm wrong about how bad things are in Tiger Town. Talking about Clemson football, today we're going to have a little fun. And you're like, what are you doing? Are you, are you schizophrenic, bipolar, what, whatever? No. Okay, maybe there's some issue there. But has it been clinically diagnosed yet? And you're going to play a part in this. I'm going to use some of your comments to call me out. Welcome to Clemson Football Live. It's one week after the spring game. This week has been interesting. There's been a lot of feedback about people like myself who who looks at the spring game and and in parts of it in a favorable light, and in other parts of it, it's just more of the same. Buckle up, get ready for a, uh, get ready for a disappointing 2024 season. Then there's people who's calling me out saying, "Hey, listen, you, you need you need to be you need to be a little more optimistic." So what am I going to do? I am going to use your comments partially to argue with me. I am going to argue with myself, and I'm going to use some of your comments to do it. First, I hope you'll subscribe. It is free if you like what I'm doing. Uh, I hope you'll subscribe and uh, pass it along to, your, to anyone who loves Clemson football, anyone who likes to talk college football. Also, I want to mention to you, I am now part of the College Huddle. The College Huddle is a conglomerate of YouTube and podcasters, YouTube personalities and podcasters who focus on their college team. So I am the representative for Clemson. Uh, Eric Boggs over there at The Ohio Podcast reached out to me and asked me if I would want to represent the orange and white. And I was like, um, yeah, I I'd, I'd, I'd appreciate it. So go check them out. The website's up, The College Huddle. Check it out. You'll see yours truly on there representing Clemson. I'm going to have some collaborations with some others. So I'm looking forward to that. So let's dive right in. The spring game left some of us rather bothered. While others said, hey, you guys are crazy. It's a glorified scrimmage. Even people who are friends of mine decisively disagree with me. It says it's just a scrimmage. And folks, here's the thing. In our society, we used to be able to disagree and still be friends. Now, I try to adhere to that. But unfortunately, a lot of people doesn't. Now, I'm not saying that towards any of my friends on YouTube. That's not what I'm talking about. But I'm just saying some people, they can't, they, they can't disagree. You have to agree with them or else you're no longer friends. Well, today, I'm not operating like that. You and I can disagree. And unless you want to burn the house down over a team that's basically a pastime and players and coaches that you probably have at best shook hands with, you go for it. But I'm not going to burn down uh, our relationship because of that. With that preface, let's argue. Let's argue using your arguments, using my arguments. And today, we're going to start off. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to share you. Uh, share. You're, you're actually going, if you don't have a YouTube channel, you're actually going to see what the comment section looks like for me if I go into a uh, comment section. Now, the last, the last comment that was left was this. Can you see that? Now you see that held for review. Just by the way, that's if any if anything pro, profane or truly bad is in there, it does get held for review, and um, it, that's another subject. So we're going to start with this comment right here from my friend to eighty. I don't know this person, but. This was the comment on my video, Spring Game Reaction, where I said yesterday, Josh Pate is wrong. Josh is being way too optimistic with Clemson. Even in the footage that he played of Kay Klubnik throwing the ball, there was like two or three clips out of like six to where he either threw the ball into double coverage or there was an interception. So to be high up on Clemson based on the overall production, having to include offense into it, I was just like, man, you're smart, you're brilliant, you're very successful, you're just being too optimistic. So I, I said, Josh Pate is wrong. 
This guy says this won't age well. Clemson is going to win 10 games plus. Cade will throw 30 touchdowns. Moffa will be a Heisman candidate. That's not optimism. That's math. Too many Clemson fans have DJ PTSD. Well, PTSD. Now, I agree with him that the past few seasons, including last year, has left Clemson fans with PTSD. We came off the, you're right, we came off the heels of Trevor Lawrence playing for us. We came off the heels of, even when Kelly Bryant was in charge for one year, he got us to the college football playoff. Then before that, the national championship. Deshaun Watson's numbers was actually, if my memory serves me correct, significantly better. As a sophomore of the year, he lost the national championship against Alabama, what, 45-40, to 40, something like that? So we're so used to that, that incredible quarterback play going all the way back to Taj Boyd. And then we had what happened with DJ. All of a sudden, it's done something to us. Cade was with first-year offensive coordinator Garrett Riley, and Cade had been pro uh, poorly, poorly prepared. Now, I've heard people say, well, he got to play a bunch, you know, in his year with DJ. No, he didn't. Cade threw 100 passes in his very first year at Clemson in 2022. 55 of those passes came in the Orange Bowl. So that means the rest of the season, the other 12 games, 13 games, he threw 45 passes. So are we overreacting to Cade? Are we overreacting that, yes, it's just a, it's a scrimmage? Maybe so. It's just a scrimmage. Lee Goldman says, tell the truth even if your voice quivers. Hammerhead Dog, Clemson didn't look bad in the spring game. It will be fine. We're going to do our best and see what happens. Take it easy on my dogs in Atlanta. I have a difficult time uh, believing that, that a Georgia Bulldog thinks that. But, hey, see, even a Georgia Bulldog believes that Clemson is going to come out early on. Even good, I mean, big John Sentin's in here right now. What's up, John? A bunch of you in here, but I'm, I'm keeping going. Because y'all know me, once I start staring at the comment section, I am as good as brain dead. I'm like, <laughs> But even Roger Parks in Big John says, hey, if you're going to catch Georgia, catch them early. You're right. Catch the Bulldogs early. Maybe something's not clicking completely for them. Now, what that might be, I really don't know. But you catch a team early. Maybe they're underestimating Clemson. Clemson's defense comes in and plays extremely well. Maybe creates some turnovers. And maybe Phil Moffa can pound the ball in. Maybe the game plan is to run Phil Moffa 25 to 35 times per ball game until we can figure out what's going on in the passing game. And then T.J. Moore is going to be here in the summer. Now, for some of you, when you hear that, when you hear that, when you hear me say, oh, uh, you know, Clemson is, Clemson is struggling, this is your response. What? Well, that's insane! Thank you, Lyle. We have PTSD. This is a glorified spring game, and it is. This is a glorified, this is a, a sp glorified spring game. This is a glorified scrimmage. Yes, the past two years happened, and yes, it was a perfect precursor to the season you're about to watch. But Brian, Matt Luke has been hired, and, and yes, he's having to, to rewire these guys, but they, at the end of the day, Matt is Matt Luke. Brian, you're wrong. Brian, Phil Moffa 
is the man. You have said that Phil Moffa is the man, that he's played second fiddle to Will Shipley. And while a lot of people was oohing and aahing over, over Shipley, and by the way, Shipley is very talented. My preferred back, even while Shipley was there, Moffa. Sorry. Phil Moffa. And if you have a questionable offensive line, Phil Moffa is the guy to run the football. So why shouldn't we have more faith that maybe Clemson has a 10-win season? Sure, they have to play in the first, what, five games, they have to play Georgia, NC State, and Florida State. Georgia, even though a neutral game, it's in Atlanta. It's only, what, 45 minutes from Athens? So it's a home game. You have NC State at home, but they have Grayson McCall. And you have Florida State in Tallahassee, but we know their quarterback and we know him very well. They are treating DJ just like Tennessee treated Milton last year. They overlooked all those years of questionable college play. and elevated him to fixed under their new system. That didn't work for Tennessee and Florida State. Even if you beat Clemson, it's still not going to work for you. DJ can throw brilliant passes at one moment, and the next moment throw the ball so hard on a five-yard out route that it goes into the ground and creates a crater that you lose your chain team in. You kind of wonder what happened. So... Right there, I just said we catch Georgia early. We have NC State in Clemson. The Valley's going to be rocking. You know it. I know it. If you've ever been to a Clemson game, and especially if it's at night, it's going to be rocking. We have a special disdain for Dave Doran, who seems to even tick off NC State fans. And then you have Florida State, who was still thinking about last year and how they should have been in the college football playoff. They're still irritated about that. We've locked arms in the lawsuit, but let's not. I mean, there's no love lost for Florida State. Somebody said that, oh, we, we don't hate each other, really. Real, I mean, maybe not hate, but we definitely dislike one another. Why? Because we're the only two teams who's truly consistently dominated for the past 30 or 40 years of this league. 40 years, counting Clemson's 80s run, Florida State did their thing in the 90s, but anyway, that's not the subject. The subject is we have a chance to catch Florida State off guard, even as good as their team was last year when they had everybody there. Still took them in, uh, took us, took them into multiple tribes in overtime to beat us. So why not? Kate has more experience. Moffa's the man. Matt Luke's working on the offense. We're getting our wide receivers healthy. We've got our defense who is playing lots out no matter how many people we returned or lost. Let's go back to the comment section and find some more arguments for, for that I'm wrong about Clemson. Jay Brock here. Our offense has never looked great during the spring game. I thought all things considered, the team looked good. I agree with Pate. It's it's just it's just a glorious. It's just it's just a glorious or glorified, excuse me, uh, scrimmage. Clemson is making the playoffs, guaranteed. Guaranteed. See you in there, John Sutton. SE Country, if Clemson can, can get that offense rolling, doesn't have to do much, don't turn the ball over, and that defense should be able to take care of the rest. This team should be able to go to the playoffs this year. Hit Wonder, how is he wrong? Just because, because one likes what he sees and the others don't, doesn't make him wrong. People are... Hi on Georgia, I'm not, and that's okay. At the end of the day, people can have their own opinions, and just because it doesn't align with your own doesn't make his point of view wrong. That's not really given a reason, but you're right. Everybody can have their opinions. It's just at the end of the day what, what washes out. But 
where I'm talking about why I'm wrong. Christian, why are we still going off about a spring game? We're not going to get a real look until the first few games. Again, it's a scrimmage. Brian, do better. Dominique, so Trent is better than Cade because he looked better in the spring game. He'll get his chance if Cade stinks it up. Cade is right on. Cade has, has got a better line and better receivers coming in. There were They were a couple of plays last year from being undefeated. Dabo is going, to back, is going back to the playoffs this year. Shame on you, doubters. Justin Stockton. Justin, by the way, Justin was very kind. Very, very kind about this. Uh, man, I've been watching your content for a long time. I always loved it. I love that you're down to earth. But from a fan standpoint, we all know the improvement Clemson needs. That being said, there is a lot of it uh, to be excited about. I feel like you could balance being realistic and just being negative a little better. My fiance knows nothing about Clemson football, but she heard me listen to your video one day and thought I was watching a fan of another team trolling everything Clemson does. I said, no, this is a Clemson football live. LOL, not hating, man. I like your takes a lot, just giving feedback. Go Tigers. Thank you, by the way, for being civil about that. Again, don't take this as, hey, I watch all your videos. I'm not saying you're always negative. I'm a fan of yours. So first of all, Justin, thanks. Appreciate it. I'm going to give a thumbs up, and I appreciate that. Folks, I'm a chronic complainer. I mean, it re really, that's what this comes down to. I'm a chronic complainer. Even someone who likes me is like, man, you're, you're just chronically complaining. You you just you just always you're just always complaining. My friend and I don't know if he's I don't know if he's watching right now. I know Parker Henderson watches a lot. I know Chase's Chase's schedule has been really busy. Chase, a long time subscriber and supporter of not only Clemson Football Life, but Bobby Durkin's my comedy act, said Brian. You just have to be a little more optimistic, man. Now, Chase said this last year in the middle of the season. Once again, me and Chase are friends. We just disagreed. Maybe I'm just, maybe I need to be more optimistic about this team and what they return. And that Sweeney, though he won't admit it, and he did fire Brandon Streeter. And then he waited a year and he fired Thomas Austin and hired Matt Luke. So what more do I want? I mean, when will I ever be happy? I mean, I'm not as successful as Dabo Sweeney. Sweeney has given us 12 consecutive 10-win seasons, six consecutive playoffs appearances. And during that time, he won two national championships. I mean, are you going to ax a guy or want a guy to leave just because winning is hard? Are you subconsciously jealous that he makes $11 million per year to coach a game? But I don't. I mean, at the end of the day, Swinney's a good story. We know how he was a walk-on to Alabama. His mom had to live in his dorm room. The guy has fought for everything that he can. He has a Christian faith that a lot of people disagrees with Christianity. So as soon as they hear him talking about Christianity, they absolutely are turned off. You want to see good discrimination? Bring up Christianity. It's the only thing right now it's okay to be discriminant against, right? Right. I'm a believer. I'm a believer, and, and, and that doesn't mean I'm perfect. In fact, it means quite the opposite, that I realize I'm not. But as soon as I bring up Christianity... There is a problem with people who claim Christianity because all of a sudden you're supposed to be perfect, and we all know that you're not perfect. That's kind of the basis of Christianity. But if you did it to a Muslim, oh, that's discrimination. If you do it to another religion, it's discrimination. So, so Brian, Sweeney has got all of this stuff against him. You supposedly have the same faith, and then suddenly you're saying all these things about him. Brian, could you not just give the man a break? He's done good. He's graduated players. He sure has.
The problem, the problem we're about, and I'm about to turn, I'm going to say hello to a couple of people in here. Big John Sitton's in here. Good to see you. John, as you see that, you see that little symbol right there? John has been supporting the Bobby, uh, he's been supporting Bobby Durkins and Clemson Football Live for, for a while now. And $3 or $5 per month, John always supports the channel. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Remember, guys, I, I don't have a network behind me like a lot of these guys do. Coach Bobby, Jared Smith, Michael Fornbacher, my old buddy out there in Las Vegas. Coach Bobby Durkins is back. I've been wanting to bring Bobby back. I did a video of Bobby the other day. It was just absolutely stupid, but it was fun. Michael, thank you for supporting the channel. $25. Wow, that's ridiculous. Thank you so much. That's very kind. Michael's out there in Las Vegas. i tell you what he's doing out there in Las Vegas. He's winning. He's just giving, shelling out some of his winnings to, to Clemson Football Live here. And by the uh, by the way, guys, I, I know my 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 Christianity comment right there, DP. I know that you're not a fan of religion. I understand. This is not to get us onto a onto a a, a subject about about though I'm not ashamed of it or Christianity. I am just saying here uh, that that it it Sweeney does catch a lot of heat for it, but if he were if he were a Muslim or if he were of another religion, uh, people would think twice about saying something against him. Um, it's it's un it's unfortunately real, uh, whether people like it or not. So not not trying to get off on this and everybody get fighting in the section, you know, uh, you know, just 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 going to go ahead and say that. So y'all y'all try to keep it civil. Let's try to stay on subject. But I did bring that up because it's true. DP's in here. Got David Wood in here. I got Tiger Paul Craven. Good to see you, Tiger Paul Craven. Eric uh, uh, Shadows. It's good to see you, my friend. Got uh, Jay uh, Earhart. It's good to see you, my friend. Notre Dame, twenty-one sixty-four. Slim Shady Canes, and many, many more. I hope you've subscribed. It's free. Again, okay, uh, Michael Fornbacher. Again, thank you for your support, Big John. Thank you for your support. Uh, no, and, and, and listen, listen, DP, listen, DP and David, listen, I want to tell you this. We can have a discussion about, about Christianity and, and the way that we believe. I'll never shut that, uh, shut that down. I just always ask that we be respectful. But in this context of what I'm bringing up is not about really, if you're a Christian, it's just, I mentioned that there is discrimination there. Trust me, I have seen it over and over and over again. Um, and so Sweeney has caught it. He has caught crap for that as to where if he were a fill in the blank other religion, people would be, the ACLU would show up to take up for him. So just saying, uh, so I'm just, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not correcting anyone here. Uh, uh, I'm just going to, I'm just going to keep going there. So, so let's talk about. The airing of grievances and why I'm right. With the airing of grievances. I got a lot of problems with you people. Thank you, Frank. God, that was such a good show. If you go through the comments section, a lot of you see exactly what I see. The past two spring games did represent exactly what would, went, what would go on. And when someone says, you're overreacting, my thoughts are... What? Well, that's insane! Y'all need to go look that up. You need to go look up Lyle, Dana Carvey, on SNL. It's... He did such a good job. Anyway. But the point is, for you to overlook... The reason that I get so intense and so irritated and I'm not so optimistic is because our offense basically has the same production. And it begins and ends with wins and losses. Last year we went to the Gator Bowl. Notice how Kentucky was jumping around like they had just won the Super Bowl. 
Did you notice that? Did you notice how Kentucky was was jumping around? They were talking trash to us, like y'all don't know what y'all dealing with. We're we're the SEC. We're playing big time, man. They were up by twenty. Or they were up twenty one to ten. Clemson was playing poorly on the offensive side of the ball, and then something clicked. Clemson came back, won the game. Phil Moffa rushed for four touchdowns. But see, going to the Gator Bowl is not a step down for Clemson. It's falling down the stairs for Clemson. Considering who Clemson lost to last year, it didn't make sense. Losing to NC State like we did, losing to Miami like we did, there's two wins right there. And then, never mind the Duke game, where at one time we were we were within a touchdown with, what, 13 minutes left in the game, 14 minutes left in the game? And then all hell broke loose. See, what I look at is not only how many games you lose, it's how you lose it. So I don't have to play football or be a, a major football coach. I don't have to be someone who sits down and breaks down and analyzes film, just like when I go to, I don't know, Hall's Chop House here in Greenville, South Carolina, which, by the way, is a very nice yet very expensive restaurant. If I cut into my, you know, $80 steak and it tastes like crap and I complain to the waiter, the server doesn't look at me and go, well, hold on, are you a chef? Have you ever tried to cut a piece of beef like that before? Or cook it, excuse me? Well, then I think you need to keep your opinion to yourself. That's what some of you do. You never played before. <laughs> then you'd understand this. Maybe you are too deep in the X's and O's that your head is stuck in it so far, you're going to be shocked when, when if things don't change, when this season could possibly, I'm not guaranteeing it, possibly be a repeat of the past two years. Why? Because the offense looks basically the same. The year before that, Clemson went to the Orange Bowl, played against Tennessee, played against Joe Milton, the only really good game he's ever had in his six years of college, including Michigan. The guy would win the would win um uh, he'd win the job and he'd lose the job. Why? Because no matter if he could fart the ball out his butt for 90 yards, the guy still, even though he was a great athlete and seemingly a very nice guy, could not lead the team. That's what kills me in these NFL combines. People will throw four and five years of college out and their performance in real games out the door. Their win loss. Doesn't matter. Throws it out. Throws it out the window, just because they can flick their wrist and toss a ball ninety yards, and then they're shocked when they fall apart in the big leagues. We've seen this over and over and over. I think we're about to see it again. But my point in all of this is that was the only good game he ever had in college. It was against Clemson. Clemson and Tennessee was playing pretty doggone close, and in Clemson, their defense got tired because the offense couldn't produce. But, Brian, that's a different offensive coordinator. Well, they lost the Orange Bowl. They got spanked. What was the bowl game they went to before? Oh, the Cheez-It Bowl. Clemson was up here. They're down here now. You notice that? You notice that direction? Down. The defense has always been good. Moffa is fantastic. Do you really want to put a season on the back of these two wide receivers that are right out of high school? That's unfair to them. Where did I know Antonio Williams, he's supposedly healthier than he's been since his freshman year. He's got to step up. Tyler Brown? I'm not going to put a lot on the guy. Stilato, the guy's got the best hands on the team if he can stay healthy. But am I right about how bad things are in Tiger Town? It deals nothing with the defense. And our kicking game, our kicking game looked okay, but if you are comfortable with what you saw with the kicking game. Oh, well, let me rephrase that. One guy missed a 55-yard attempt. Okay, and you're like, well, Brian, what do, you, what do you want there? Okay, that's unfair to put him out there for the 55-yard attempt. 
and leave that impression with your open scrimmage to the public that's televised on, you know, ESPN, ACC Network, PBS channel. But I, I'm not sold that our kicking game is fixed. Matt Luke is having to retrain these poorly trained offensive linemen. When, when uh, Sammy Brown came off the edge and got to the quarterback as though nobody was there, do you know who was blocking him? Former five-star Tristan Lee. What happened to Tristan Lee? Well, I can tell you what happened to Tristan. It's the same thing that's happened to counting DJ and Cade and seemingly Vizina. Uh, it's the same thing that happened to them. It's called poor coaching development. Coaching matters for the umpteenth thousandth time. If these guys have absolutely really nothing to do with the progression of players, why in the crap are they paid so much money? They're paid specialist money. A specialist is supposed to specialize in developing players. Oh, but notice Matt Luke can come in. And he's supposed to fix, he's supposed to clean up everything literally right off the bat. He's not going to do that. Garrett Riley, I, I'm getting, I'm getting anxious with him. But here's the deal. Garrett Riley inherited a mess because we went out and no, I didn't. Because Clemson's leadership went out and hired. It's totally the tale of two different stories. On the defensive side of the football, you have a bunch of guys who has a lot of experience. Save Mickey Kahn. And Mickey hasn't messed up anything. So let's leave him alone. By the way, 52 of you in here, I hope you hit the thumbs up. Hope you've subscribed. Drop a comment in the comment section or in the chat. I have the uh, co uh, comments turned off right now to where I can't see them. But you look on the defense, you go, how are they so good? I'll tell you how they're so good because they have guys who's been coaching forever and has not only experience but reputable experience. You can't say that for the offense. Well, they hired Matt Luke. They just hired Matt Luke. Do you understand what I'm saying? They just hired Matt Luke. The guy hasn't even it, the guy just started practicing with the team. He had them for three weeks before the Gator Bowl. But Clemson is paying for the sins of, of, of on one side of the ball doing the smart thing and hiring and retaining guys who has years of good experience and hiring, what, one guy who's never coached uh, coached at this level before with Mickey Kahn, if my memory serves me correct? And on the other side, you had a bunch of guys who, two of them had never coached before. They're former players. And we're sitting here wetting our britches going, I wonder what's wrong with the offense. I can tell you what's wrong with the offense, and here is the point that should scare us all. And this is why I'm so doggone negative and not optimistic. It's because once you poorly train a player, it's like poison. You have to get it out of them. And if they drink too much poison, they're toxic. There's nothing that you can get out of them. You have to now wait for recruits and then wait for them to develop. That's why I am so negative and not so optimistic. Our defense, defense is great. I feel bad for them. I feel bad for them. These kickers, I feel bad for them because they come on the heels of Potter. Potter was incredible. He was automatic. I feel bad for these for these players who come in and they they they're you know four and five star players and they're not panning out and people's looking at them like they're a loser and will will absolutely go after Cade and say Cade looks bad and no Cade does not look does not look good he did not look good last week folks the reason yeah it was a scrimmage you're right yes it was a glorified scrimmage last week and he looked just like he did in this season. See, you put his poor performance in the scrimmage plus his poor performance in the season. And it looks the same. And, and, and our first game is in four and a half months against flipping Georgia, who, by the way, when they beat Florida State as bad as they beat Florida State, Kirby didn't have to do that. Kirby was sending a message to everybody. We should have been in the playoffs. We were three 
points from a 30 consecutive win. And we lost in the SEC championship to Bama by three measly points. We could be going for a three P and y'all kept us out. And Florida State's over there going, We're undefeated. You look you look bad at the end of the season because Jordan Travis was that good. And you got your head ripped off. Georgia was sending a message. That's the team we have to play. They are ticked off, folks. And they're playing us. And Cade, his performance in this scrimmage, glorified scrimmage, looked the same because he's picked up poor habits because his offensive line couldn't block a fly in the past because they were poorly developed and he's been poorly developed and the wide receivers have been poorly developed. And the only reason that Moffa looks like he does is because Moffa is a wrecking ball. Notre Dame was shocked at what a wrecking ball he was. And I'll guarantee you this, I'm going to tick off some people. If Will Shipley was the starting quarter, uh, starting running back for that game, we would have lost. Because when your offensive line is falling apart, you have to have a bruiser like Moffa. That might be our only hope. But that's the reason I'm not optimistic, folks. The offense looks basically the same. And Matt Luke has his work cut out for him. I don't expect much from Matt Luke this year because he's having to retrain people who has been drilled thousands of times the wrong way of doing things. Just look at Tristan Lee. I believe the top recruit out of the what? Was it the 2021 recruiting cycle? He was actually rated higher than Shipley from what I can remember. Could be wrong. I know you'll tell me. What happened there? What happened there? It's coaching. That's why I'm not optimistic. Because I've seen that defense go out there and play their butts off. Sweat. You can see they're they're exhausted. They are losing it. They are trying to keep their team in the game. And they keep looking at the offense going, what is going on? It's not our defense's fault. You pay for bad decisions for a long time. And I, 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 I hate it. I hate it. But, you know, that's the reason why. And you say, use the comments section. Brian, you said you are going to use the comments section. Here's the funny thing about it. Look at the comments. Look at the comments. Tuning in from Seattle. I'm guilty... <laughs> I'm guilty of sending links to my friends back east to save me the trouble of bringing a dose of reality to the scene. A lot of you knows it. He kn he knows it. You know it. There's a lot of you leaving mess uh, messages in here telling me, hey man, we see the poor offensive pr production. There's a lot of you who are sitting there going, hey, hey, at, we see what you're talking about, pal. We might not disagree, we might not agree 100%. I mean, you see it. DP, I think we'll be 3-3 three and three at midseason. I'll say it again. It looks like, to me, this is a church program first and a football team second. Now, I know you and I disagree on Christianity and and you said uh, religion, but but here's the thing, my problem that I have with Sweeney and this is one thing a lot of people have said that I don't like Dabo Sweeney. Let me tell you what I don't like about Dabo Sweeney that we've seen came out over the past few years. This is a this is a long show, so if you're watching this later on and you you look back and you most of my shows are under 25 minutes, some of them under 15, but. The, my problem with Dabo Sweeney, and I'm going to pull this back over here so you can see me, my beautiful face. My issues with Dabo Sweeney, the whole rant with Tyler from Spartanburg, and, and, and then the, a lot of people forget about the 1.5% comment was just the week before that, is that where DP, you and I might agree, even though you have a, dis, you, you have a disagreement on just religion in, in, as a whole, my problem as a Christian is I feel like that, and I'll leave the, 
I just say this. To play football at Clemson a long time ago, this was how Sweeney treated it. You had to be a good person. He didn't say you had to be a Christian, by the way. He didn't. And I appreciate him leading with Christian values. Christian values are very good. Uh, no stealing, no killing. You know, we'd have less divorce rate, more fa less families would be torn apart, less, less people would have to go to 45 Christmases because somebody couldn't keep it in their pants. Um, you know, 45 different places at Christmas time, you know, because families ripped apart and all that. We can all disagree in this. That's just that that is that is my beliefs. I don't have a problem with that. The uh, the thing is, is that you had to be a good person who graduated, who also played good football. It was kind of the blessed trinity. No pun intended. Of coming to Clemson. But when he went out and hired coaches who didn't know what they were doing. All of a sudden, he started leaning heavily on you've got to be a good person. And, hey, we've got, we've got, you know, yeah, we want to win football. And there's nobody more upset about it than me. But do you not realize how many players we've graduated? You realize how many good young men we're churning out? The dialogue changed because winning, winning was not happening instead of owning it like he should and said, hey, listen, I went out and hired a bunch of first-time coaches. And like I... Mickey Kahn was Mickey Kahn had that I, that I know of had never coached at this level before. Now Mickey Kahn's a uh, is a high school football legend from what I can remember in the state of Georgia. But who's around Mickey Kahn? A bunch of guys who's been coaching. I mean, I know that people could say Wes Goodwin had never coached at his position before, but Wes Goodwin had been around the NFL. He is highly regarded. In the coaching circles. In fact, it's been said that Dabo Sweeney told Brent Venables, look, you've taken some of these guys. You're not taking Wes Goodwin. And Wes Goodwin hasn't broke anything. Mike Reed's been around forever. Nick Eason's been around forever in the game and in, in NFL coaching. So, so it, it's really brazenly staring you in the face of what happened. But Sweeney, what did he do? He turned on the fans and he basically said, hey, if you don't like the way I do things, you can go pull for another team, which he said, or the university can fire me. Yeah, and pay you out, what, $60 million to go away? I want everybody to hear this. Those of you who has ears, I hope you'll hear. I appreciate Coach Sweeney. What he has done in, this, in his story is incredible. But I heard someone that I said, uh, that, and I've mentioned this recently, about a month and a half ago, I watched someone who I respect and who I consider as a, as a, a YouTube colleague say, Dabo Sweeney can hire whoever he wants to hire. Well, I hate to admit to you or, that he could have done that on day one, the very moment they signed him as the head coach. He could hire whoever he wants to. But see, we're confusing that with do whatever he wants to and still get the same result. See, if you run into someone who is a successful weightlifter and a bodybuilder, and they've won some championships at weightlifting and bodybuilding, just stick with me here. These examples, these examples put the pieces together for you. And then all of a sudden, instead of lifting weights all the time and eating healthy, they start cozying up to cake. They stop lifting. And then they go and they enter their weightlifting championships and their bodybuilding competitions and they start losing. Why? Because they're not operating in the same winning ways that they used to operate in. We see this with businesses. Businesses become so powerful, they're doing so well, and suddenly these, these men and women who are running these companies believe they can say and do anything. They can misspend money, as uh, misappropriate funds, as much as they want to, why? Well, we're us. In five to ten years, they're bankrupt. Because you can't do anything that you want. You must understand. You must understand, no matter if we're talking about a football team, if you're talking about a business, all the way down to a family. There are certain things, that, and this is winners. Winners understands this. Coach K had to change the way that he approached things. Once the game changed on him. And by the way, I'm not really I'm not talking about the transfer portal here. I'm talking about hiring and making better hires. 
which we're stuck with what's happened over the past few years because these players, once again, they've had this crap drilled into their head. That's the reason you're seeing four and five stars play like one stars. On the offense, that is. It's been happening for a while. This is not just a one-off occurrence. But winners understand that you can't do anything you want to get a specific result. Winners understand that, yes, winning is hard, but for you to get a specific result, you have to go through a specific routine and you have to be willing to adjust. And my problems with Sweeney is that when the fan base called him out for it, instead of being appreciative that, yes, he wanted to talk about appreciation with Clemson, does he appreciate that Clemson gave him a chance? Does he appreciate that Clemson took up for him when sometimes he might have said something over the over the past 15 years that he could have possibly left out? Hey, I run my mouth. I get myself in trouble at times. I get it. I'm not a hypocrite here. Does he appreciate Clemson? Or the very moment they look at him and say, hey, coach, you're not operating in your winning ways. Well, I'll take my ball and go home. That's my problem with Dabo Sweeney. And I don't care if it's the Alabama coming out in him. Folks, sometimes the very way that we are can work in our favor. And that's good. Until it doesn't, and then you have to stop it. So that's my problem with Sweeney. And I said that publicly to clear this up. Folks, I'm going to go to the comment section. Roger Parks, Debo is stubborn and defensive. Doesn't mean I don't like him. Yeah, he's stubborn and defensive. I don't think he's a bad guy. Uh, uh, still gamble. Still gamble, very well said. I agree with you. Uh, thanks for supporting the channel. Uh, here's, the, here's the truth about Christianity. And, and I'm, I'm saying this for anyone here... And, and DP, I'm not, I'm not singling you out. I know that you disagree with me vehemently on this. But the, the idea of Christianity is that you're not perfect. You realize that you're wrong and that God's right through Jesus. Okay? So we, just because people mess up does not mean they're not a believer. I'm not questioning Dabo Sweeney's salvation. Only he and God knows, uh, based off of a scriptural layout of what salvation is, where he stands with God. I'm not questioning that. But I do agree with you still gamble that people will use either their Christianity as a crutch to kind of get people off their back. Maybe they live, they uh, use their political affiliation to get people off their back. Hey, we vote the same, so you got to support me because if you're not supporting me, you're supporting the other side. Um, uh, we see people we see people do this in the fan base. Well, uh, well, look, they're a Georgia Bulldog, and they're making a good point, but we're Clemson fans. We stick together. I'm sorry, folks. I'm not part of a cult. I'm not. I am not. Uh, and and I think I think a certain level of pride has creeped in on Sweeney. And it's cost him. Divert Taylor. Nick Eason had to tell Dabo to do something to his offense. Yeah. That's that's during that Notre Dame game in twenty twenty two. David Wood, Moffa has patience. Uh, yes. That, that's the thing about Moffa. His field vision is unbelievable. And the thing I like about Moffa is I know he's no gazelle, but he's not slow. And with all that size, he hits that next gear. Very well said. Here's the deal. It's only been three and a half months since Cade played a game. He is the same. You're right. That's why I'm worried. And, I, you know, I take up for Cade. I don't blame Cade for this. I blame, I blame people with a whistle hanging around their neck for this. Somebody said this to me the other day and said, you know, if I was, uh, you know, 
if I were a top recruit and I was a quarterback, I would, and I'm a Clemson fan, I wouldn't look at Clemson. Somebody said that to me. I agree with them. Why would you go to Clemson? Trevor was no better when he left than when he came in. And I've had discussions with people and had to think about this. Why didn't Clemson go to the NFL and hire some type, some big-time guru? Because here's the deal. The NFL has had to train and prepare Trevor Lawrence, Patrick Mahomes, Jalen Hurst. Jalen Hurst is a lot better than what he was at Oklahoma and Alabama. Why? You have to find a specialist once you... Hey, listen, if you get a once-in-a-lifetime player in, and I use that about Trevor Lawrence and even Deshaun Watson, but especially Trevor, you get that player in, your average coach, even your average good coach, probably doesn't have much to pour into that guy. Oh, Lord. Doc's Nickel Fritz. I love that name. Trent has it. Should have been able to get a quality scholarship guy in, not trying to make the best of a situation. He's generally the first walk on. I felt that way. Best wishes for Cade. But Doc's Nickel Fritz, uh, unless Cade, Vizina, and Tyson drop dead, you're never going to see Trent Pierman unless we're up 40 to nothing. I'm at that point now. And it's sad. Trent, Trent Pierman should hit the transfer portal now. After that performance, he could actually probably get a decent offer. Even though his dad has been on staff at Clemson for years and has been has known known Dabo since the Alabama days, you can go ahead and kiss it goodbye. If Trent Pierman actually sees quality playing time this year or just is given a semi shot, I'm not saying replace Kate. I'm saying a semi shot. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, um, uh, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Clemson needs to find a quarterback specialist. Slim Shady Canes. Sounds to me that Dabo is acting too prideful then turns wrathful when he is called out on it. First of all, thank you for supporting. You didn't have to do that, Slim Shady Canes. I appreciate that. I appreciate you supporting the channel there. Slim Shady Canes, y'all, y'all's team is interesting. I think Cristobal has got a fire. That, that, that seat's getting warm down there, especially how you lost some of the games last year. That's what I've said about Clemson. Losses will happen. It's how you lose them. Is it because of poor game management? Is it because of poor development? You know, that, that versus, hey, there's two really good teams playing, two really good coaching uh, staff's going head-to-head, -head and somebody has to lose. That's one thing. But going out there and losing it because of mismanagement, uh, you know, of course, the, that, that game against uh, uh, Georgia Tech. And the thing about Dabo is Dabo does get – he's getting prideful. And, and you, you know, hey, I'm, 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 you know, I love Clemson more than anybody. If you don't like uh, – okay, cut it out, man. Cut it out. Cut it out. You're mad because people are right. You can't go hire all your buddies and all your former players to go coach. Uh, you know, and expect great things unless they are really good at what they do, like Nick Eason. Thank you for supporting the channel, man. I really do appreciate it. You move Pyramid up, Vizina bolts. Dabo knows this. Hmm. David Wood says uh, he's not starting elsewhere. He's not starting elsewhere. Folks, listen, I'm going to let y'all go. Thank you for joining me. I want to hear your comments below. I read them. Why, why should I be optimistic? I mean, really, I, I mean, I'm not being a jerk here. I'm not being, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to set you up so I can smack you in the head. I, I, I said, that's not it. Now we can have a firm discussion, you know, heated here and there. But, but I, I'm not, I'm not, listen, I try not to burn bridges over a pastime. 
This is a pastime. I love my tire. You can tell I love Clemson. Every time I drive through Clemson to go see my family, uh, I try to go past the stadium. I, and it's out of my way. I'll drive out of my way, go through, go through the school and everything. I, I love Clemson. But at the end of the day, I am not going to burn relationships with people over a flipping pastime and over players and coaches who doesn't even know my name. And if they do, we probably don't even know each other. In fact, you and I probably know each other way better, way better than they do. I'm not going to do that. But I want to know, why should I be optimistic? Why should I overlook that the past two glorified scrimmages has accurately predicted the following season. Why, why should I overlook that even though we've changed offensive coordinators ex except for a play here and a play there, the offense basically looks the same. Why should I overlook that? Once again, I love Moffa. I'm not taking away from Moffa. I'm not taking away from Brennan. So I'm not taking away from the possibilities of these new wide receivers that are coming in and then guys who are getting getting healthy like Stolato and, and Antonio Williams. I'm, I'm not doing that. But why should I overlook that the offensive line play that Matt Luke has his work cuts out cut out for him? Why should tell me why I am overreacting to see that that Cade still has these very bad, very bad tendencies? And, and like Big John said, he hasn't played a game in three and a half months. He looks the same, folks. We're only four and a half months away from playing Georgia. Do you think that's going to be fixed by then? Maybe so. Tell me why. If you want to support the channel, there's a join button below the video. Listen, it's me, myself, and I in my bonus room. I'm a hobbyist. Some of these guys, like Josh Pate. Josh Pate, I, I, I actually enjoy listening to Josh Pate. I mean, he's got 24-7 uh, sports and uh, CBS behind him. He's doing great, and good for him. Good for him. Me, I, I don't even have any of the Clemson publications behind me. I like being able to say and give my opinion as I do because, hey, here's the thing. I have strong opinions, but if I'm wrong, I try my very best to go, you know what, I was wrong on that. But I'm going to say what I believe I should I should say. And uh, if you want to support the channel, just like uh, uh, Big John Satin, Roger Park, Steel Gamble, Michael Fornbacher supported it uh, on a one-time donation. We had... Uh, uh, Good grief. Going back up here. Slim Shady Canes. Dude, I am so sorry. Uh, Slim Shady, I've known you for years. Supporting the channel. If you want to do that, I do appreciate it. Folks, whether things are working out for us Clemson fans or not, whether life is good, or if Clemson's bay majorly in the valley of college football, shadow of death, it's still always good to be a Clemson fan. Go Tigers.